Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 1 for March the 7th, 2021. We begin a new unit today uh, for our uh, spring uh, series of lessons uh, that will cover uh, the month of March, April, and May from our Pathway uh, Bible Studies. Um, this unit one is entitled Faithful Prophets and our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Following True Leaders. Our devotion reading is taken from Psalm 77 uh, verses 11 through 20. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Exodus chapter 12 uh, verses 28 through 50 also from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 uh, verses 15 through 22 and our lesson text today uh, will be taken from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 15 through 22. Our key verse reads, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, uh, from your fellow Israelites you must listen to him and that's taken from uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 18 verse 15 from the NIV translation our lesson aims today number one is to study Moses role as a prophet of God in leading the Israelites out of Egypt secondly to reflect on leaders who guide us through seemingly impossible situations and then thirdly to completely rely on God in resolving challenging situations we have just two outlines today that will be a part of our lesson uh, the first outline is entitled the request uh, for the Lord's prophet and the second outline is entitled the test of the Lord's prophet and so as always we are thankful and uh, appreciative of God's mercies and grace that he have allowed us to uh, yet another day an opportunity to continue to study his word we thank you for all of uh, the hearers we're certainly praying for you and your families we're praying for our country and this world as a whole uh, we certainly need to uh, be vigilant uh, in the word of God and uh, remain focused uh, on the promises of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ even as we see uh, the day drawing nigh. We have quite a bit to cover with you today uh, going back to the Old Testament the book of Deuteronomy um, and we want to be able to share as much as we can with you we pray that you would get your Bible uh, and be prepared to take some notes. Uh, I just want to give you some background on this book before we begin. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy, um, the author is Moses, and essentially the book of Deuteronomy is a book of sermons. Um, its uh, recording takes place, uh, one of the places uh, uh, in the plains of Moab. Uh, we date this book uh, around 1400 uh, BC. Uh, it was recorded and or written uh, to remind the people um, of what God expects from them. So I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, Moses has some three sermons uh, throughout this book. Um, uh, if we were to look at the outline uh, of our text today uh, we would be in the second sermon so-called sermon uh, that highlights the laws and this goes back from uh, goes back to uh, Deuteronomy um, chapter 5 and concludes at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and then there are some final farewell remarks uh, uh, from the 31st chapter uh, through the 34th chapter. We want to keep that in mind. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about this biblical context 
uh, the book of Deuteronomy as a series of addresses delivered by Moses to the nation of Israel as they prepared to enter the promised land. Uh, Moses reviewed and repeated previous instructions and focused on what God expected of Israel as they entered and occupied um, the land. So rather than being a second law, Deuteronomy is a retelling or expansion of the original law received at Sinai. Uh, Moses' audience was the generation of uh, Israelites who were born uh, who were either children or not yet born when God first gave the law at Sinai so Moses admonished this new generation to remember the consequences of disobedience and and the blessings um, of obedience to God I won't stop right there but we want to remember um, this book. Uh, today's study comes from the uh, so-called fifth and final book of what is often called the Pentateuch, uh, the Torah or the first or the five books of the law. Uh, and so as we get into this lesson today we want to uh, make sure we understand where the children of Israel are uh, they are about to enter into the promised land. There are some issues uh, that the Lord had uh, announced to them, uh, but he's reiterating through Moses uh, some things. I want to go very quickly as we get into our outlines today from Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 15 through 19. I want you to go with me to the 18th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy and I want you to go down to verse 9. I want to read verse 9. I want to read verse 13 and then I want to read verse 14 as we flow into this lesson today. But Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9. The Bible says when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abomination uh, of those nations. Then I want to go to verse 13. The Bible says you shall be blameless before the Lord your God. And then verse 14 says for these na nations which you will dispossess Listen to soothsayers and diviners, but as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. Uh, so a soothsayer uh, would be a person able to uh, 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 foresee the future. Uh, these types of individuals were an issue in the promised land. Uh, and so the Lord was warning the children of Israel prior to entering into the promised land that there would be soothsayers in the land. There would be people, uh, or as we would call it today, prophets. Uh, there are two things, two terms I want you to uh, think about uh, as we think about prophets and or prophecy. Uh, are these individuals foretelling or are they forthtelling? There's a difference and we'll try to define that for you as we go. Uh, but the Lord was warning them that there were people in the land uh, who were ascribing to be prophets or seers or soothsayers um, uh, and there was some manipulation involved in this because uh, as we'll see going through this lesson, and as I will highlight for you today, uh, these individuals seek to gain an advantage. Uh, and so uh, these prophets, uh, uh, as we think about them in the Old Testament, mechanical uh, uh, prophets whose they, their books make up over a quarter of the Old Testament and so uh, they were uh, uh, called by God to be channels of, uh, of, of revelation right so uh, 
they knew uh, these prophets what the Lord wanted and required and so they conveyed these things to the people so prophecy involved prediction right or foretelling but usually uh, this was done in a context of declaring uh, uh, God's warnings and his exhortations to his covenant people um, and so uh, and, and also forth telling right certain truths uh, these prophets look forward to the coming of the messianic king and his kingdom uh, uh, after purging judgments but often their chief concern uh, was exhortation to repentance in hope that uh, impending judgments might be averted. Uh, one of the things that we should remember about the Old Testament, uh, uh, particularly as it uh, talks about prophets, whenever they appeared, it was not good. Uh, God sent them in a time that was critical uh, in the covenant relationship uh, uh, with his people and so these individuals uh, uh, would come on the scene and they would essentially be forecasting trouble foretelling right uh, 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 certain things that God was going to do if the behavior or the conduct did not change and also they were establishing uh, certain truths for forth telling right uh, establishing or reestablishing God's commands to the people reinforcing them if you will and encouraging the people to live by these principles that God had uh, uh, laid out in the law uh, for his people I should tell you that uh, uh, this is not an isolated incident uh, uh, limited to the Old Testament. We have a situation in our culture today, uh, and we're going to get on to the lesson text in the outlines, but we have an issue today with prophets or prophecy, people telling us things. Uh, they're either uh, foretelling, they're forecasting things to us, um, or they are foretelling could be a combination of both right so we want to keep in mind that uh, and as we think about this lesson today and as I was studying this lesson today uh, I, I want us to understand that the threat of false prophets is a reality it was for Israel and it is for us today but I will leave you with this question and perhaps we can expound upon it a little bit. Uh, how do you know if someone is of God? How do you know that? This is something that came up in the 18th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, since the children of Israel had been warned to uh, watch out, if you will, for these soothsayers, then it begs the question well if 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 we're not to listen to the soothsayers uh, 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 by commandment then who should we listen to uh, and who should we tag as credible uh, 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 those being of God and those who are false prophets all right so let's get into this first outline the request uh, for the Lord's prophet this is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 15 through 19 and I want to read this from the NIV translation verse 15 says the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me uh, from among you from your fellow Israelites you must listen to him so if we think about Moses uh, if I can just pause here uh, uh, for a moment I, I, I want us to think about typology here I want us to think about Moses uh, acting uh, 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 being raised up has been raised up as a prophet uh, a type of Christ if you will 
uh, uh, and so God used these individuals, uh, these types, if you will, uh, but they are not the type. They are not the actual prophet. Um, if you have a, a King James version, uh, or perhaps another version, your prophet would be a capital P. Uh, uh, it wouldn't be a lowercase p, or uh, standing for one of the uh, other prophets. But in this context here, uh, we need to understand that uh, uh, there was a great prophet to come. So Moses is forecasting something in the future. So obviously it's it's not him, but but this is a wonderful prediction of our Lord as the prophet, right? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the one that God is speaking of and 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 and, and admonishing the children of Israel to look ahead to the fulfillment of this uh, type of prophet that Moses was right uh, I want you to look at I, I want to give you these scriptures while I have them uh, as it relates to this prophet and this prediction uh, 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 looking forward to the New Testament of Jesus Christ uh, I want you to look at the gospel according to John chapter 1 uh, verses 21 through 45 the Gospel of John chapter 7 verse 16 uh, uh, John chapter 8 verse 28 John chapter 12 verse 49 and 50 Acts the book of Acts chapter 3 uh, verses 22 through 23 and also Acts chapter 7 verse uh, 37 so uh, this prophet that the Lord is talking about that would come, uh, he is to be immeasurably filled with the spirit of truth as the true prophet in contrast to the false prophets under demon uh, inspiration. I want you to also look at the first epistle of John uh, chapter 4 verse 12. Uh, but it should be uh, 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 mentioned that uh, uh, those of us that preach the gospel uh, if I can just share this and we'll get back to verse 16 of the uh, book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 all of us are infused uh, uh, by a spirit right we speak to you from a place of unctioning uh, we speak to you from a place of uh, uh, the spirit of truth or under the direction of the Holy Spirit or we are speaking from the spirit of error right our influence is not of God uh, and so as a, 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 a people today 2021 we need to have ears the type the type of circumcised hearing that can be able to discern uh, 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 what is of God and what is not. Uh, keep in mind as these prophets, as we will get into this, uh, they sought control of God's people. And we'll, we'll talk about that uh, as we go along. So let's pick up again uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 16. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God nor see this great fire any more, or we will die. I want you to look at Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 23 through 27 for your reference. Verse 17 the Lord said to me what they say is good I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites and I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell them uh, everything I command him. Verse 19, and I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. So that I gave you your references uh, for this uh, uh, future 
uh, uh, of this prophet that would come and would have uh, uh, the words of God in his mouth <clears throat> excuse me and he would be speaking the things that God has commanded him uh, 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 to speak and if I could just say this uh, about preaching the gospel men and women of God who come on the scene um, they uh, 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 tell us that they are of God but let me just say this it takes God to raise us it takes God <clears throat> to raise a preacher right uh, you cannot get this uh, uh, on your own you cannot do this <clears throat> excuse me on your own uh, when we ascribe the to these titles of who we say we are uh, that does not necessarily mean we have a message we still have to have a message right we have to have a particular message that is from God for the audience that he dispatches uh, 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 his uh, 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 proclaimers uh, to speak to and so when you think about all of these these individuals that were soothed sayers in the promised land uh, the children of Israel would have been faced with a dilemma <clears throat> of who these individuals are if they did not have the laws of God already proclaimed to them what do I mean by that we need to be armed and this is something that we need to be practical about even today we need to be arming ourselves with the Word of God and we need to be able to understand the Word of God so uh, in a way that when we hear things that are not of the Word of God and we'll qualify this uh, as we go along because there are people that will use God's Word but not in context right they will use God's word in a way that God didn't intend for it to use. They will add things as the Pharisees in Jesus' day. They added commandments to the law. Uh, they added things that, that, that were conducive to control over God's people. And so we have to have keen insight into who we expose our ears to, right? Um, but I was thinking about Israel and you can look at this at your leisure uh, Romans chapter 9 verses uh, 30 through 33 and I would just set this up by saying our teaching and preaching to you should lead you to Christ just like it was in the Mosaic law uh, this commandment here or this wording here in uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15 as we read God is saying he's going to uh, 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 raise up a prophet like me like Moses from among you from your fellow Israelites and he says you must listen to him but if I can't understand if I can't discern who is speaking to me how can I go forward Right? So it's very important that you arm yourself uh, uh, with the Word of God and it's important that we as leaders and ministers and so forth that we give you what thus says the Lord. Uh, that we come from a place of Scripture that, that, that is relevant to what the Lord said. Right? Uh, commentary is good. Right? But the Word of God is as stated. Right? We, we cannot uh, a substitute uh, 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 God's word uh, uh, for our own platform our own commentary especially when it does not add up with God's word I hope this is making sense to you because these soothsayers in Israel's day were very strategic and they were very manipulative on how and what they told the people and they were uh, 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 essentially 
uh, 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 banking on, if I can use that term, the ignorance of the people. But God had already warned his people that these individuals were present and God was already warning them that this could be a detriment uh, uh, to them if they didn't pay attention to the laws that he had given them. So following his instructions regarding the obligation to support the Levites, this is in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 1 through 8, Moses warned the people to avoid the superstitious and occult practices of the polytheistic nations that would surround them. This is what we read to you uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9 through 14. But God had judged these practices and those who practiced them as abominations. Uh, that is uh, outrages, disgrace, revulsions. God required uh, that their focus and the voice to whom they listened for guidance and direction be his alone and not that of the soothsayers among these nations. This is happening today, right? <laughs> this is essentially happening to us today. We are, uh, are giving our ears to all of these different things that that are uh, 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 that are causing us spiritual conflict to sometimes even question who we are and what did the Lord actually say that he wanted us to do so I like this that God required that their focus right their focus and the voice to whom they listen for guidance and direction be his alone. It, you know, one of the things that I have to do that I'm disciplined enough to do as I go forward in the Word of God is to give you biblical reference. Uh, I don't, I don't want this to be this teaching to be this exhortation to be about me. I don't want it to be my commentary. So I pause and I give you reference for what I'm saying uh, that it may be qualified that it might be credible to you as being uh, a scripture being the source of of, of my teaching if I hope this is making sense to you uh, because I don't want to mislead you uh, and, I, and, I, and I don't want you necessarily depending on what I said but I want you depending on what the word of the Lord says and that's what God is saying to them because these people have all kinds of systems that they're using uh, 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 to get people on board and to control the lives of these people uh, uh, to their own death, right? This, this, some of these gods, if we had time to get into some of the worship of, of these practices of these gods, uh, required human sacrifices, right? Uh, uh, required uh, of the sacrifice of their children, right? That they would they would have these children uh, die to serve and to worship these these so-called gods, and so this is not something that 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 uh, uh, is 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 not dangerous. It's very dangerous, right? And so we have to be careful. And this is the part that we as believers today we have to arm ourselves not just for edification but we have to arm ourselves because we are not the only game in town if I can say it to you that way right we are not the only thing or the only people that is speaking there are many 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 people speaking all sorts of things right but how do we know that these individuals are of God is the big question and we have to answer this individually and we also have to answer this corporately so the place if we can talk about that of the prophet among the nation uh, had honored their request the place right if we think about this uh, 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 God had honored their request right God had listened to them right and God had uh, replied in a way to help them to understand I'm going to give you someone who won't hurt you who won't mislead you who won't uh, uh, destroy you 
So refusal to obey the Lord's prophet carried the consequence of God's punishment. You know, if we don't obey the Lord today, right? If the children of Israel obey the Mosaic law, they were punished for that, right? If we follow the flow of the book of Deuteronomy, you will see blessings for obedience and you will see curses uh, for disobedience, right? Because they didn't do uh, 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 what the Lord said to do. So, <clears throat> but many believe that the prophet to whom Moses referred was none other than Jesus Christ, the ultimate mediator uh, between God and his people. That's why I gave you those scriptures that I gave you earlier. Uh, but just to touch on uh, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, and I, I want to just touch on verses uh, 9 through 14. So uh, false forms of revelation can come in the form of mantic and, and, and magic practices, right? So the word mantic, M-A-N-T-I-C, uh, uh, the use of animal uh, divination is an attempt to, con to control the future by inquiring um, about the meaning of a particular sign, object, right, uh, or dream. Uh, mantic divination is an attempt to control people or events by special powers or rituals. All forms of mantic uh, and magic powers were rejected as abominable uh, because they sought guidance apart from God's revelation and manipulated people uh, and because in the end they encouraged uh, the independent lifestyle with little regard to God. Let me say this to you church. We cannot preach to you unless it is revealed. We are dealing with revealed truth. And so since these individuals had no relationship and had no fellowship with God, right? They substituted that lack for this uh, 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 mantic uh, uh, and magic practices. So they attempted to use other means and then they said or would, would argue that they were now qualified as people who had a revelation from God. And, and you know, when I was looking at this and I was thinking about this independent lifestyle, we, we have to be careful with this church because uh, 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 it's important that we not just be a, 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 a good orators of, of, of what the Lord has said, but this thing has to line up with who we are, right? Uh, we have to be uh, uh, the kind of people who are living this thing uh, 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 through the lens of God's word. Uh, and that's very important. And it's also an issue for us today uh, because we, 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 we look at the grandstanding uh, from a superficial aspect and we don't internalize. We don't, we don't fact check a lot of these things and it, and it, 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 it causes us uh, and it leads our families astray. Uh, and and it, it had to be critical in Israel's day for God to repeat this to them. It had to be critical. And, you know, as I thought about this, I said, well, they were going over into the promised land. Why would these soothsayers be over there? Why wouldn't they be cleansed since God dispossessed them? You know, uh, I was, and, and as I thought about that and then contrast that with, what Jesus prayer in the uh, Gospel of John chapter 17 when he was praying for the disciples uh, he asked Jesus asked the father he said I pray that you take them not out of the world right but that uh, uh, that but that you keep them and so in other words we are not going to be able to escape people who are trying to uh, 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 infiltrate uh, uh, the Word of God through all of these different means, we are not going to be able to get away from false prophets. They are going to be around us 
uh, uh, for the balance of our days until the Lord calls us home. So, uh, uh, and that was the way that I answered that question for myself, that uh, this land that God was sending them in still had issues in it, but God was placing them there, strategically placing them there so they could be an example of his grace and his mercy and of the laws that they had been taught. And so we have to live amongst these things, even though they are not of God. We have to live amongst ungodly people. We have to live amongst uh, uh, false preachers and teachers. Uh, we just cannot escape this no matter where we go, no matter what church you uh, uh, attend, no matter uh, how educated you think you are. You cannot escape false prophets. They are everywhere, right? The first epistle of John, uh, uh, chapter 4, uh, John said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, right? But test the spirits to see if they are uh, of God. He goes on to say, even at that time of that writing, he said many false prophets had gone out. Many antichrists have gone out into the world. And so uh, they, they have multiplied just as Christianity has multiplied. Right, and so these these uh, combating forces are relevant, and they are all present in our day and now, uh, and, and as it was in Israel's day. And God is warning them, uh, not only telling them uh, not to get involved, but telling them how to stay with Him. Right, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. You know, we that God has given us a remedy for these things stay with the Lord stay with what you have been taught stay with the example laid down uh, uh, for you by Jesus Christ stay with the teachings stay with the church stay with good pastors who are leading you and and and, and feeding you with uh, with 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 wisdom and understanding and arming you not just for the Sunday or the day that you hear it but for the day that is to come which is growing more and more evil right I hope we understand this today, church. This is critical. But the second outline is entitled, The Test of the Lord's Prophet. Uh, this is taken from Deuteronomy chapter uh, 18, verses 20 through 22. And I want to read this from the NIV translation. God says through Moses, But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything that I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods is to be put to death. Verse 21. You may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? Verse 22. If a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message of the Lord. That is a message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously. So do not be alarmed. Let's talk about this. Let's think about Jesus. Let's think about his uh, status as a prophet. Let's think about the fact that uh, if you remember the course of his life, who did he always reverence? Or reference as the source of his teaching of his miracles everything that he did he always referenced the father he was not trying to take the credit for himself what am I saying as we speak to you today and as you hear various ministers over the course of time Listen for who they reference. Listen for uh, 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 their reverence to. Listen for to God be the glory. Listen for, for thus says the Lord. Listen for according to the word of the Lord. Listen for these phrases, these kinds of uh, 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 promptings that take you away from the speaker and take you directly to the source. We are not, we are a resource. Every pastor is a resource, right? He is not the source. 
So we have to lead people, as John the Baptist said. They asked him, was he the Christ? He said, I am not him. We have to lead people to the source. So if we are trying to discern who is speaking to us, that would be one way, right? Certainly we need to be on with the word of God. But individuals are speaking to us. And so what Jesus always did as a true prophet he referenced the true source. He referenced the one who gave him the words. He took no credit for it, right? The words that I speak are not my own, Jesus says. The things that I do, I did because my father. To, you know, always going back to the source. So the people would not say Jesus was a self-seeking he was not seeking a platform. He was pushing people back to the origin, right? <laughs> if you think about Genesis, right? When Adam and Eve, you know, went through all of that in the garden and were put out and all of this kind of stuff, uh, 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 what Jesus essentially came to do was to bring men back to the Father back into a, a relationship with their creator, with the one who made them and breathe the breath of life. And so our preaching and our teaching today, however great it might seem to be, however uh, 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 knowledgeable we might have it and have shaped it, needs to have an in run. It needs to go back. It needs to send people back, right? To their savior it needs to send people back to the source of salvation i cannot save you let's do it this way i cannot save you right but i can tell you about the one who saves i should be able to lead you to the one who saves these soothsayers in israel's day they were leading people to themselves for the control of their lives and their families, right? They were intending for these individuals to be their subjects. I don't want you to be my subject. I don't want you to be uh, 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 my personal uh, witness, my personal disciple. I'm a disciple myself, right? But we have to lead people to Christ. I want you to look at John chapter 10, verse 27 and 28, and also John chapter 10, the gospel of John chapter 10, verses uh, 4 through 6. But just to illustrate, uh, I said this about preaching the gospel. We're dealing with revealed truth cannot preach the gospel unless it has been revealed to you. I want you to look at Galatians chapter 1 uh, verses 11 through 17 and listen what the Apostle Paul said about himself. But the children of Israel, the Lord spoke ahead through Moses. If somebody is speaking to you something that is not true, and I added something to the commentary here when it talked about um, Jesus called the devil the father of lies and many naive and unsuspecting persons have fallen prey to his deceptive tactics. Uh, in ancient times, the devil energized the work of Canaanites who came in the name of false gods and others who claimed to speak for Israel's God. Right? Many false prophets would arise in Israel presuming to speak in the Lord's name. The penalty for this presumption was death because God demanded that the people obey his prophet without question. So he provided two tests for discerning true, a true message from God. As in verse 21 and 22 first the message had to be accordance in accordance with God's word uh, with God and his word and I added to that 
uh, in context. As I said earlier, many times we are quoting things, scripture, out of context. We're using it for our own purpose. Yes, the word of God did say such and such, but who was it talking to? And can I use it is the central question, right? We can use all of God's word, but we need to make sure that we're not using it uh, as a means of, of, of personal gain, as a means of, 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 of causing people to become uh, subject to us rather to God. So we have to make sure, and you and I have to be able to listen for that, right? We have to be able to discern that. So these things need to be in accordance with God and his word. So what does God's word say? Where is Jesus leading us to? Where, where is the law? leading us to if you read as I gave you Romans uh, chapter 9 uh, verses 30 through 33 you will see that if Israel had stayed the course right generation after generation the law would have led them to Jesus Christ because Christ is the end of the law he is the fulfillment of the law right he is the fulfillment of the mosaic type and so since Israel didn't arrive at the at the at the uh, 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 the true type, they stumbled. So we have to be careful about that. Second, the prophecy had to come true. If these two requirements were not met, then the people were not to listen or be alarmed by the false prophets. As I said to you earlier, when we're listening to preachers, people speak of God's word, are they foretelling? Or are they foretelling? What are they forecasting? I could forecast for you today and tell you that Jesus come, is coming back again. That would be in line with what he said. That would be in line with the second coming. So I could forecast in that, in that way. right? I could tell you to be ready because that's what he said. I could tell you that because he said he was coming back. Right? for his church without spot or wrinkle. So we can say certain things that we understand that the word of God supports. But if we are saying things that it has not been revealed to us that those things are of God, then we need to be mindful of those things. So, and are we exposing God's truths to his people? What does the Lord ultimately want from you, right? God wants us, according to Paul, it, uh, as he relayed to Timothy, that God wants all men to be saved. Right? John 3.16, For God so loved the world. You all know that passage of Scripture very well. He gave his only begotten Son. We can, we can, we can lead people right, to a place where they don't perish without Christ. That's the intent. Right? Today, God's people are still exposed to a myriad of voices that claim to be of God. False prophets and teachers speak of other gods, ideologies, and philosophies that have no basis, no basis in spiritual or biblical truths. So there is a dual responsibility inherent uh, in this reality for believers today. One is the absolute necessity of having a personal, committed relationship with God. This kind of relationship activates the spirit-led discernment that enables believers uh, to separate biblical truth from erroneous or misinterpreted doctrine. Second, Every true believer, hear this church, every true believer must be engaged in a consistent study of God's word. If you rely on people uh, 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 as a substitute for your own study, then you may not arrive where you need to be. But it, it is important that we, we uh, it, it says here, we must be engaged. There is no doubt about it, right? Now that we know that there are other things out here, other people saying other things, and sometimes, and even 
Perhaps some of you listening to me now have been harmed by such teachers. But we have to do something about that. And we can do something about it by being engaged in consistent, right? Just as a starving person can be tempted to eat anything, the believer with no or very little knowledge and understanding of God's word will fall prey to all kinds of false doctrine. This suggests that the attendance and participation numbers of the local church, educational ministry, talking about Sunday school, talking about Bible study should closely correlate with the number of persons who claim uh, church membership and attend Sunday worship. Listen at this. Satan easily tempts fools and deceives those who have no solid grasp of God's word. You know, as any baby would start off drinking milk, we have to come to a place at the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, I believe, and chapter 6, would tell us that we are in a place now where we have to start eating meat, the meat of God's word. We have to be able to digest the solid truths of God. We have to get past the ABCs of scripture and move on to full maturity and spiritual growth. I hope, trust, and pray that we've given you something to think about. I want to pray for us as we seek to close. Just know that I'm praying about your ears, praying about what you hear, praying about your discernment, your ability to know the difference these are things, if they trouble you, I want you to seek God out in your private time, in your secret closet. And if you can't hear, ask God to circumcise your hearing. You need to be able to hear. What gives us hope today if we can't hear from the Word of God? If we can't hear Him, how can we go forward, right? How are we encouraged if we can't be encouraged by the voice of the one who saved us? Right, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come as humbly as I know how with a heart uh, full of sincere thanks for the many things that you have done, for the great promises that you have bestowed upon all of us who believe and call upon your name. Father, we thank you for this lesson today, and we are encouraged today that your voice is true, your word is true, the word of God is right. And we just pray, God, that as those who would hear would embrace, if there is any weakness in the hearing and the discernment, that you would shore it up, that you would strengthen it and, and grant to them not only to be able to hear, but encourage us all, God, to continue to stay and hold fast to your unchanging hand, to continue to engage your word in our personal time and even in our corporate time, that we would pay attention to the things that we are being told. And we would take heed as we see the day drawing nigh. Father, we thank you for each and every family today. And we certainly want to pray as we are uh, in this pandemic. And that you would lift up those who are on the front lines. And those who are seeking to help all over this world. And encourage others, oh God, that we might be able to stay with your word today in the face of all adversity. We thank you for what you've done and what you have promised to do. We call it done. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.